To satisfy the demand for meat, Chinggeti's camel slaughterer sacrifices three or four a week. Due to the Getna, the population doubles and they kill a camel a day. Before cutting the camel's neck, it is placed facing Mecca. The animal falls to the ground without any commotion and the butchering begins, which lasts almost an hour. The camel is, as they say, a recent arrival to the desert. Before the renowned caravan routes, the so-called cart routes had existed in Roman times. These routes connected the Mediterranean with sub-Saharan Africa, but the journey was made in horse-drawn carts. It's also true that at that time, the Sahara was not as vast as it is today, and the journey was not as difficult. Due to the dunes' gradual advance, it became impossible for horses to make the trip, and so camels were imported from Arabia. They quickly became essential for the men of the desert. What would have become of mankind in the Sahara without camels? Without camels, the desert would only be a home for scorpions. No part of the camel is wasted, whether dead or alive. The head, hoofs, tail, everything is eaten and used in many ways. The hump is not an enormous water deposit, as we all believed as children, but an energetic fat mass that is the camel's true engine. A good hump doubles the sale price. And at the market, it is the most solicited part of the camel. The hump and the liver are the most expensive. The rest of the internal organs are the least expensive. The camel is a democratic and solitary animal, in life and in death. Alive, they have served as a king's mount and as the slave's beast of burden. Once at the market, the camels are butchered into delicacies for nobles and protein for the less wealthy.